In our last video, we talked about computing the par value of common or preferred stock. And in this video, we're going to talk about that next component, additional paid in capital. And I'm just going to jump right in and give an example of a situation where you have a firm uh, that issues, issues 20,000 shares of common stock. 20,000 shares of common stock. I'll just abbreviate here at $35 a share. $35 a share. What that's what they get in the in the market, right? That's what investors pay uh for shares of this firm. It's a, it's an IPO. They get 35 bucks a share, but their par value, let me just write you know, put this in a different color. Par value is a penny a share. No. Oh, it's 0 0.01 a share. That's the par value of the stock. And then the $35 is what the firm actually gets, the money it actually gets. So let's just go ahead and let's think about this in terms of a journal entry. How will we go and journalize what's taking place here? So the first thing we know is we know it's sometimes in a journal entry, just think what's going on with cash. Sometimes that's easiest to figure out. And so when we know that we issued 20,000 shares of stock and we got 35 bucks a share for it. So there's going to be a debit to cash. All right, we're going to debit cash. And how much are we going to debit it for? Well, we're going to take the 20,000, right? This 20,000. And then we're going to multiply that by the $35 a share, All right? So just multiply that by 35. And that's going to give us a debit to cash of 700,000. Now let's go to the credit side. We've got something going on with this par value, and as we talked about in our last video, we're going to have a credit to common stock. You know, how do we compute that? Well, we'll take the same 20,000, but now we're multiplying it by the par value per share. So we're going to have 20,000, but this time it's times a penny, times 0 0.01 per share. And so that's going to give us a credit to common stock of just 200, right? And now we've got, remember, look, this, this doesn't balance. This doesn't balance. We've got 700,000 on one side and, and 200 on the other. So what's going on here? Well, that's where our additional paid-in capital account comes in. And I'm just going to abbreviate that APIC, additional paid-in capital, right? It's the amount that the firm received above and beyond the par value. So how do we compute that? Well, it's quite simple. We just take that 700,000 and we subtract out the 200. So 700,000 minus 200. That's going to give us our additional paid in capital, which is 699,800. And so this journal entry reflects what happened here when the firm issued 20,000 shares of stock at a par value of one penny per share and it actually received $35 a share.